The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. That's me, and that's you, Tommy. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien. What's your name? Tell him. What's your name? Tommy O'Brien. This is Tommy O'Brien as well, and we are good to be back, folks. Uh, we were up in Boston for a nice O'Brien family reunion at the South Boston Yacht Club. You got to love it. Uh, an amazing weekend with family. Feels great to be back. But you talk about a weekend. It's me and me. It's you and Daddy. It's you and Daddy. Are we on the TV? Hey, did it's you? It's me and Daddy. Yeah. Are we doing the show? We're doing the show and the market's on end. That's right. Did you have fun in Boston? I had fun in the Boston, guys. Yeah, the Boston. I had fun in the Boston, guys. That's right. He sure did. Uh, and we come back, and boy, it's quite a market, man. We got NVIDIA earnings tonight. We got NVIDIA earnings, Tommy. NVIDIA. You say that? NVIDIA earnings? Who do you got? Show them. Who do you got? McQueen. McQueen. We got McQueen. Of course we got McQueen, folks. Uh, let's get into it. We got a little bit of negative market action it's to kick me things and off. McQueen. It's me and McQueen. Tommy, see the market? What do we got? What color is up there? What color is this? What color is that? Uh, red. A lot of red on the screen, folks. Tell them. A lot of red on the screen right now. And green. Green, 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 and green. Red. And red. Green, red. We pick up in negative action with the S&Ps off by 13. We got the NASDAQ 100 off by 79. You talk about an acceleration yesterday. Microsoft to all-time highs yesterday. Uh, interesting. Ahead of the AI poster boy, NVIDIA climbs to 50602. We take a look at the daily basis. That is also an all-time high coming into their earnings. And you know what? Before we get into the market wrap, I'm just going to kick it off with NVIDIA for a moment because it is interesting when you take a look at this equity. We're trading at 50409 right now. You back things up, even a five-year weekly, okay, for some context here. That first acceleration peaks out just above 500. We chop around. Now, we have been in this range, and I'll call that range a $100 range from 400 to 500 from when May 22nd, it's when they blew apart those earnings, right? AI was already in the rage. Uh, Chap GPT had been around for some time. The acceleration this thing has had this year alone from 140 to 505. Now, what is interesting is you jump over the Analyze tab. You jump into the earnings. They have their earnings after the bell tonight. You have about a $32.58 move priced into their earnings, 59 cent if you're rounding up. That is for the event taking place tonight. If you take a look at just a week, okay, let's say you want action through Friday. It's Tuesday right now. You want action through Friday. You're looking at almost a $37 move implied in either direction. That is an extreme amount of volatility, okay? Oh, what do I do? You got to press play? Oh, and what is especially interesting is how much... You don't want with that one? Should we choose a different one? No banging, please. Okay, no banging. We cannot bang the computers. Tell them, folks. Which one do you want? We got a lot of videos. We're on, the queen we're on YouTube. Car. It's amazing. I always say it, man. YouTube. It's McQueen Police Car. McQueen Police Car. Think about it. For all that we pay, I'm always going to digress a bit when we do the shows with Tommy, but I love doing them, and I appreciate you tuning in. And it's a privilege to be here with my son back from vacation. Uh, it is interesting, folks, when you think about how much we pay for streaming services and actually how many of those streaming services are now going to become available for free. You go from that model of television that's free, right, broadcast television, you go from that to a streaming model, and then what happens? You revert back to the model that flourished in the beginning, which is a free model built on advertising. Something tells me they'll both be around for the people that don't want to pay for advertising. But when I look at something like YouTube, we stream YouTube on TFNN, et cetera. It is interesting how uh, it comes back around. Now, back to NVIDIA. NVIDIA, 2.5 billion shares outstanding. Pretty simple math, right? 2.5 billion shares outstanding. That means they have about a $35 move priced into their earnings event this week. Okay, that's the implied move in either direction. You're talking about about what? 80 to 85 billion dollar move depending on which way you're swinging in terms of you have a 35 dollar move 
So for every dollar, it's $2.5 billion. For every $10, it's a $25 billion swing, right? So you could potentially see NVIDIA, the market is pricing in tonight, which is why I always say it's important to understand options, even if you don't trade options and you trade the equities. No, no. Hey, we're doing... Police car, police car McQueen. Let's see if we can find Police Car McQueen for our man Tommy O'Brien right now. Let's see, Tommy. There he is. We found him. Yeah. It is interesting. The extreme amount of volatility priced in on just a dollar basis, right? So you're talking about 70 to $80 billion in either direction. You're talking about a potential $150 billion swing from low to high market valuation. Uh, you are dealing with a company that's valued at $1.2 trillion. Now, what is also interesting is you back this thing up on a five-year weekly. Uh, excuse me. There's your five-year weekly. This thing was only trading at $35 about three and a half years ago, four years ago. No, what is that? Four and a half years ago, excuse me. So the entire implied move was where this equity was trading at four, four and a half years ago. Uh, on a much more recent basis, the move is almost a third of where it was trading at just about a year ago. Just rapid acceleration across the board, man, and we will see where we go. And now let's get into some of the market outlook in terms of the wrap up in terms of what's happening this morning especially interesting the run that you have had with nvidia being the ultimate growth stock of future promise when you have yields rising over that period of time what if yields have been dropping dramatically as the ai revolution was taking place right oh, what happened you got them there you go so what would happen if we actually had yields benefiting some of these growth stocks, yields have been hurting these growth stocks and they've been taken off the Magnificent Seven. We might get a little bit of a rever reverberation today, uh, but we will find out. The day is young. we got 17 minutes to go until the opening bell. We jump over to Microsoft shares. Let's put them on a little context. Five-year weekly, same chart as NVIDIA. And you're talking about quite the acceleration. Pretty similar chart in terms of the top out, the pullback, the acceleration, we're making new all-time highs as of yesterday. That's the weekly chart we're looking at, up to 378.87 as of yesterday. Uh, we're backing off of that price level just a bit this morning, back to 375. Boy, you could spend a whole week on the saga of open AI. I mean, if you're a market participant, you got you got to be interested what happened over the weekend. The one thing I'll say about it, we've all been captivated by it. You can't help but be captivated by a private company that's valued at $85 billion, that's a nonprofit with a subsidiary that operates for profit, that's owned by Microsoft for 49%, controlled by a CEO that has no ownership in the company, and you have a board uh, that kicks them out unannounced on Friday, didn't even communicate with Microsoft. Uh, what I found so surprising is that there was no plan from the board. Okay, and we'll, we'll touch on it a little bit, I guess, later in the program. But boy, if they had just come out with a PR blitz, I mean, you know, maybe you do something like that and you appear on Bloomberg or you appear on CNBC. The fact that they went quiet and had everything, go to that fruition. And um, this is the chief scientist, right, that was supposedly ahead and led the revolt to a bit. Absolutely amazing how this thing keeps going around. Now you have him tweeting yesterday. This is yesterday, okay? So, I mean, but I was on the plane flying home yesterday. He deeply regrets his participation in the board's actions. First of all, he started those actions according to reports. Never intended to open harm open AI. I love everything we built together and I will do everything I can to reunite the company. Pretty interesting that the people building AI can't even figure out what their own actions are gonna cause in about three days time. Absolutely remarkable. We're coming back, we're talking equities. We got a lot to talk about. We got Best Buy earnings. We're coming back with our man, Kevin Hicks. Stay tuned, folks. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Tom O'Brien, Tommy O'Brien. We get the markets in negative territory to kick off Tuesday trading of Thanksgiving week. We're coming into quite an event after the bell with NVIDIA earnings. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks, to talk about some of the action. Folks, every trading day, 12 noon Eastern time, right here on Tiger TV, the program Fast Market from the Schwab Network with your host, Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the team. And let's get into it, Kevin. Uh, quite the weekend in the AI forefront of technology. And with that, we come in all-time highs on Microsoft, all-time highs on NVIDIA. Could expectations be any higher for their event after the bell tonight, Kevin? You know, Tommy, for your viewers that watch our show, we've been talking about low bars for earnings and high bars for earnings. And there probably couldn't be a higher bar right now than NVIDIA. So with everything going on, in AI and where this stock finds itself. You know, this market's had a great run. NVIDIA, since October 27th, is up about $100. It's up $99 since since October 27th. So this is a stock that, you know, yes, can it go higher? Yes, it can. Will it? I have no idea, Tommy. I mean, watch, <laughs> watch this afternoon. It's going to be a fun one. Maybe some volatility after the bell. That's the one thing that may happen uh, in my mind. But, yeah, who knows where this thing is going to go. They've had some blockbuster earnings, man. Uh, but that's part of the reason that we're pushing some all-time highs on this equity. We pick things up with the market, Kevin, pushing almost 4,600. Um, tech stocks, of course, carrying it higher. But what do you think about the general market coming into December? I mean, some pretty lofty numbers as we push almost 4,600 on an equity basis in the S&Ps right now. Well, Tommy, all the numbers I'm going to give you are since October 27th, when the market hit hit lows during the day. The S&P is up 10.4%, currently a 71 on the RSI. The NASDAQ up 13%, currently a 72 on the RSI. The Russell 2000 up 9%, currently a 61 on the RSI. And you know, I just said, uh, NVIDIA's rallied about 25% since October 27th, and it's a 70 on the RSI going into their earnings. That's going into, that's based on last night's close. So, yeah, I think, that, you know, this market has run a long way. It's uh, pulled a lot of things forward in the market. Rates are lower. The dollar's lower. That's good. Crude oil is lower, although crude oil rallied the last days. Why? Because there's an OPEC meeting on Friday, and you know they're going to be loud in that meeting. They they prefer crude oil around $80, not 70 
So, listen, I think this market is really made a, a significant move the last few weeks. And, frankly, it might look a little tired right now, a little fatigued going into this NVIDIA earnings. But never n- never doubt we'll see what NVIDIA brings. It's going to be a big one, Tommy. I have no idea what they're going to do. Uh, and it was it, those are some startling numbers, man. When you hear him said, we know we've had quite a run. I was just as you were saying, I was saying, you know, my goodness, you're saying the Nasdaq. Um, I believe you said 13 plus percent in the Nasdaq over that time. And I was counting yep. the bars, Kevin. I said, how many trading days have we had since then? I think it's 16 trading days to be up 13 percent. Um, pretty startling when you look at that. Well, almost a percentage a day as we keep climbing into these lofty numbers. Uh, what do you think about yields right now? You know, I was talking about absolutely remarkable what these growth companies have done when yields have actually risen. That's kind of been a little bit of wind in their face. Remarkable to think what would have happened if we had yields potentially dropping. Uh, what do you think about the yield conversation that was forefront? We've gone AI a bit, but still, of course, on people's minds. Yeah, I mean, this is the inverse, right, of what's happened with stocks since about two-thirds of the way to October, I mean, we've had a significant move down in yields from 4.9. You know, we, we touched 5% during the day to now 4.41 4, here to uh, to start Tuesday. So, yeah. you know, stocks like lower yields. Uh, no, no. It, you know, they, they like the lower dollar. If you look at what they – both those favor stocks. And what is the result of that? Look at a 13.5 VIX. So uh, I think this market has just settled down. Some of the macroeconomic metrics have softened, and that's made stocks look and feel much more attractive, Tommy. Have you heard, Kevin, what do you think about the conversation? I've heard some talking about that, you know, when the Fed starts to actually potentially cut, that may be when – the, you could see an actual pullback in the market because the reason they may be cutting is we may be facing some weakness, whatever it may be. Now, usually we were in the scenario where you get the Fed cutting. My goodness, the market's going to love that. Um, have you thought about that scenario? I'm trying to do that in my own head, you know, saying, OK, what if we do actually get the Fed pivot? We actually get that first cut down the line, whether it's three, six, nine, twelve, whenever it is. Uh, what do you think of that scenario that some people are laying out in terms of be careful here when you see that the yields may actually drop, that that may not be the best thing for equities? Have you thought about that one? Yeah, and it's it's a, it's two different conversations. And the conversation really is why are the Fed lowering interest rates, right? Uh, Neil Kashkari gave us a little window into that uh, a week or so ago when he spoke, and he said, as inflation gets lower, right, a five and a quarter to five and a half Fed funds rate gets more and more restrictive as the Fed as the overall inflation level comes down. Therefore, at some point, if you don't want to over restrict the market, as though as the inflation rate comes down, you have to start easing down the overall Fed funds rate so you're not too restrictive on the market that's already softening. So now, the other scenario, that would be a better scenario for stocks. The other scenario is that something happens, you know, some event, some reason, some severe softening in the market happens, and they, they would have to lower rates. So two different ways to yeah. look at it, one a little more positive than the other, Tommy. But I think as inflation gets lower, that 5 and a quarter to 5.5% Fed funds rate is going to look more and more restrictive, Tommy. It's a great way you lay it out, man. I appreciate the insights as always, and I, I feed you those questions. They're not easy questions. It's the gymnastics I'm doing in my own head as we kind of encounter these unknowns, uh, but interesting times to be in the market for sure. With that in mind, Kevin, we talked about one of the equities you may be touching on on Fast Market at 12 today. Do you guys have some equities lined up for the program? Sure. Of course, we'll talk about NVIDIA extensively in the first segment of the show. Like Foley is going to do a presentation on Urban Outfitters. Uh, they have earnings come up, and then Deer and Company. Always nice. a fun discussion to talk about grain markets and their relationship w- w- with Deer and Company. So three good names today, obviously, with the most important being NVIDIA. Kevin, I appreciate the time, as always, on a busy morning. We look forward to the program at 12 o'clock today, and we'll talk to you tomorrow as well. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. See you tomorrow.
See you tomorrow. Always a pleasure. Folks, check it out. 12 o'clock today. You heard it. They're going to be talking extensively about NVIDIA. And yeah, who knows where this thing is going. But there, there's an extreme amount of volatility built into this equity as we covered at the beginning of the program, man. You're talking about a $32 move in this equity. You're talking about an equity with 2.5 billion shares. Uh, pretty remarkable, right? Depending on which way this swings, the market cap of this equity potentially an easy $100 billion, whether you're talking about you move upward, downward. Uh, I mean, what is that exactly we're talking about? Yeah, you're talking about, whew, yeah, 30 puts it at 75 billion, right? Yeah, so basically an $80 billion swing up or down, that creates a $160 billion window, whether you go 80 billion down or $80 billion up, where that thing might be priced in for one standard deviation tomorrow. All right, folks, stay tuned. We'll be coming back for the opening bell. We got markets slightly in the red. S&P's off by 13. NASDAQ 100 off by 81. Tell them, Tommy, we'll be right back. We'll be right back. Okay, we'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. What was that sound, Tommy? Bell. The opening bell. For the stock market. For the stock market. That's right, folks. It's the opening bell for the stock market. We got equities open. We got equities in the red. S&P's off by 13. NASDAQ 100, you're off by about 87. Dow off by 66. Let's jump over to the main event after the bell tonight. NVIDIA shares. Negative about three bucks. I mean, pretty remarkable. You almost close at like the, the tick 
high. I mean, not quite, right? What'd you close at? Uh, about 504 yesterday. You made it above 505, but boy, in the context of the volatility of this equity, to close within a dollar of the all-time high tick as you come into the earnings event. Pretty remarkable. Microsoft shares down about $3. You talk about some volatility yesterday. Um, can't say enough about that one. Speaks for itself. We jump over to Amazon shares. We check in on the Magnificent 7. There's a drop for you, man. Amazon shares off by 2.2%. What's going on with Black Friday, man? What's going on with Amazon? Uh, I'm not sure. Do we have some Amazon earnings coming out? I mean, um, news? They don't have earnings. But this might be giving back some of the action, I guess. Whew, I don't know. Amazon off by 2.3%. We did have some Kohl's earnings. Kohl's with their numbers. I think I saw something like comp sales falling for... Let's check it out. I was just reading it right here on... Uh, where were we? Not that one. I'll have to find it. Yeah, here it was. You had Kohl's seventh straight drop in comp sales, pointing to an ongoing decline in foot traffic and a broader shift away from consumer spending on discretionary goods like apparel. Let's check out the longer term look on this Kohl's, man. Trouble. <laughs> Trouble, right? Boy, I tell you. So we go to the mall around here, um, and let's jump to Target in the same deal. So Target... Has decent earnings last year. Trouble at, tra last week, excuse me. Trouble as well, but they have decent earnings last week, at least. Kohl's, seventh straight decline in comp sales. I'll tell you, folks, the Kohl's experience is, for some reason, not as enjoyable as Target, from my opinion. And Kohl's is very expensive. Target is also very expensive, but it's not as enjoyable. And I find myself wanting no part in Kohl's. One of the malls we go to regularly has a Kohl's within it. And I don't go in there at all. Now, we might go in there maybe during the holiday season occasionally, okay, as you might get some good toy sections. Just go do a little window uh, shopping with Tommy, etc. But, no, and it's funny. So I flew home yesterday, got home in the, in the middle of the day. No, you can get that later. Oh, you want to show him Spidey? You want your Spidey? I want my Spidey. Oh. My Spidey's there. He's right here. We got him. There he is. Oh, and we got Tracy, too. Tracy the Spider. Uh, we're big on uh, into and is Spidey. You want it off? It's right there. You want it off or on? Off. Off. Okay, let's take his backpack off. There we go. It's Spidey. It's Spidey. Spidey and his amazing friends. Now here's the kicker, right? Where do we find Spidey and his amazing friends? Disney Plus, of course. Disney, Spider Man, Spidey. And what's funny is this is not Spider Man, folks. This is Spidey and his amazing friends. And there is a difference. Uh, Coles. So we go, we land, we come home, we get changed. Uh, we had an absolutely amazing time. As I said, I'll pull some pictures up tomorrow is what I'm going to do. Share some pictures. Uh, I mean, can't make it up, folks. I said, you know what? We, we could have had a reality television show pilot episode in terms of just the awesome scene, the O'Brien family reunion at the South Boston Yacht Club. Um, an absolutely amazing time. So we fly home yesterday. We come home. We get changed. It was about 2 or 3 o'clock by the time we were there. Uh, my dad was flying home a little bit later in the day yesterday on a different flight. And so we had some time to kill. I went to Target, man. We went to Target. We did a little bit of Black Friday shopping. We did. And there were about 100 O'Briens there, about 100 O'Briens in the top floor of the South Boston Yacht Club. And, man, I miss, uh, as they say, God's country, as they call it. And, yeah, they just built, uh, rebuilt the deck. Absolutely beautiful. Out on the water. For you Bostonians out there, how about some amazing weather this weekend, right? Uh, Friday, we hit up Faneuil Hall. We hit up Ned Devine's having lunch in Faneuil Hall. I think it was 62 degrees out in the middle of November, sitting in the middle of Faneuil Hall and enjoying some beautiful music. You got street performers out there having some good lunch at a beautiful spot. Ned Devine's had been there many times in my 20s uh, a while back at this point. Uh, but nonetheless, just absolutely amazing weather. Point being, we get home, we go to Target yesterday. No chance we're going to Kohl's, man. Uh, now, they both have a problem that they're expensive. I love doing window shopping. They did have some pretty phenomenal deals for Black Friday. I'll say that much. So we'll see where we go from there. But Kohl's is in trouble, man. Kohl's is down 9%. My personal experience is talking to my dad about this a while ago. Both Tracy sides of it. Want. want me to hold Tracy? Okay, I'll hold Tracy. What's and you got Spidey? Problem? What's the problem? What's the problem? So that's, what's what, the problem that's what Spidey says to Tracy. And Tracy tips off Spidey of problems going on. And Spidey goes and he saves the day. Does he save the day? He saves the day. He saves the day. That's right. 
Uh, okay, we jump around. What else we got going on? We got Best Buy uh, with their numbers. Trouble, as they say. Trouble for Best Buy. Best Buy down about 5.5% to kick things off right now in the trading session. And let's see what else we got going on. Let's see what else we got. Yeah, Abercrombie & Fitch uh, with their numbers as well. Yeah, no trouble here, man. You're down 5%. But you're only back. Excuse me. You're only back to where this thing was last Thursday. What's Spidey doing, Tommy? Look at that three-year weekly. Now, what's remarkable is I used to shop at Abercrombie and Fitch when I was in college. Look at this thing, man. Yeah, be careful. Okay, you're pushing. You're pushing highs, all-time highs. And anytime you've pushed all-time highs before, you've reached a cliff. So I'd be very skeptical until you actually come over this thing. Maybe you're going to need to consolidate. You know, you were just trading at 15, 14 bucks, and you're pushing 70 for Abercrombie and Fitch. But boy, that's been an acceleration in a big way. For Adam Crombie. Uh today, though, a little bit of a different story. Let me pull the Abercrombie one up here. They raised the outlook after the quarterly sales surged 20%, but this is one of those stories, man. All right, here's the headline. Abercrombie and shares um, and Fit shares raise outlook after quarterly sales surged 20%. They raised the full-year guidance again after another quarter of sales growth. They're defying an overall slowdown in apparel. You. Thank you, buddy. Did you pull it up for me? Thank you. I pulled the music up for you. You pulled the music up for me? That was very nice of you. I pulled that one up. That I one? I pulled that one up. I pulled that one up. Thank you. I pulled that one up. Th this might be a uh, teaser to the bar being set high, right? Earnings a buck eighty three versus a buck eighteen. Revenue one point zero six versus nine eighty one. Net income ninety six million compared with the loss of two twenty one. 2.21 million potentially yeah strong numbers and what do they do they trade back a bit because you know the whole world of expectation was priced in now the market holding up pretty well on the open nvidia is flat they got back that loss on the open look at this back to a five minute chart Which five oh who is it spy amazing friends spidey and his amazing friends that's why it's not spider-man huh tommy and who's this tracy tracy yeah and is this Spider-Man? What's this? A backpack. That's his backpack. That's right. Put it right there. <laughs> okay, let's check in on Microsoft. Uh, 375.29. This one will take some time to play out. Now, it is interesting as you jump around here. Um, even, you know, you pull up the front pages and, you know, as I come to air, the news out there that potentially you have a potential deal that the U.S. has helped brokering between Israel and Hamas to release some of the hostages. Just for a humanity perspective, you hope that happens, man. Um, haven't, most of the time, the front pages of most of these news organizations are the war. But guess what? Open AI? Yeah, they supplant, they cemented that one. Uh, stay tuned, folks. We'll talk some of the equities that are moving this morning. We got markets in the red. We'll be back right in three minutes. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
the Chapman Way of Up-Down Sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We have markets pretty much where we kicked off the session with the S&Ps off by 13, NASDAQ 100 off by about 80, Dow by uh, about 100 points in the red right now. We jump to yield. So you got dollar weakness today. OK, Kevin mentioned it. You have the 10 year. As we continue, we're pushing 4.4. We might get a 4.3 handle by the time the program is done. 4.4 is where we're sitting at right now. So it wouldn't take much. This is the chart of the tenure up here, man. We've been talking about it for a while. We were within that channel line. You broke above it. We were looking for the retest. Doesn't get much more perfect than that, man. You test that channel line on November 13th. The last eight days alone, you're up by almost two points. As you're pushing 109 right now, you're up by another five ticks in the tenure. You got yields at 4.4%. Uh, well off the 5% number that we had about a month ago. So you've lost six tenths percent in a month, just like that. Now, I think that that is at least an area that we're going to get a little bit of a consolidation in, okay? I don't think that we might get the acceleration. I like to do that one. No, I don't think that one's going to work, buddy. That's a different show. Hey, you know you know what's remarkable? As I said, we segue occasionally when we're doing the programs with Tommy, right? Mm -hmm. I want a different show. You want a different show? You want to go back there? So what's remarkable is you see the importance of thumbnails on YouTube, Okay. The best thumbnails out there are the ones that are for sponsored videos. And usually they're bringing you to an external website is what I they're doing. Tractor tipping. You want tractor He wants tractor tipping. And it's remarkable to see that when people are paying for that, that they have fine-tuned that thumbnail. And so often the thumbnail that Tommy wants to click on is the one that is the sponsored link that brings you to a website that is an external URL. And it's remarkable that they have perfected those thumbnails, which lead to so many clicks. Um, you've seen some of these content creators out there talking about, you know, sometimes they'll put out a video and they'll put it out with 200 different thumbnails to test that, to choose the one that they're actually going to use to cause the algorithm, to accelerate the clicks, et cetera. They use 200 sometimes, even more, I'm sure. Um, you okay? Would you like a drink? You have your drink there if you'd like. Oh, my goodness. Let's skip the end. Oh, which one are we going to do? Uh, the alligator one. Alligator one. The alligator one? Let's see if we can find it. It's from McQueen Center. Jackson Storm. Jackson Storm. We get Jackson Storm over here, too. And you get your number four car. Okay, now. S&P's off by about 15. Let's check in on NVIDIA before we jump around a bit. You got NVIDIA shares trading down about a dollar. So we talk about yields. Now, where I go with this is, you know, I don't know if we're going to see the 10-year climb above 5%, folks. Kevin talked about the two scenarios here, right? In one scenario, 
you get yields decreasing because the Fed is cutting because they've become too restrictive as inflation has calmed down and growth has calmed down a bit. On the other side of that, you have something breaking. Maybe it's just the, the economy in general breaking under the cost of capital, et cetera, and they would be cutting. Sustained yields on a 10-year basis well above 5% may cause something to break. And that, I think, is one of the Fed's biggest fears right now. You've heard Chairman Powell talk about it. We've been talking about it on this program. His last press conference at the beginning of November when they had their pause, okay, he stated very clearly that the risks are now weighted to the side that they risk more by hiking and potentially doing harm to the economy than they do by pausing and letting inflation run out of control because even where they are right now, they are in a fairly restrictive policy rate. Now that's their feeling, nobody can be sure. But the data is lining up that they would be correct if the data lines up in terms of, we are in a restrictive policy, that is causing inflation to cool, so therefore the risks are now greater uh, weighted to the side that they risk more by hiking. That I think puts a relative cap on that, especially with the movement we've had recently. What do you think, you agree? You think so? What do you think? Yields going up or down, Tommy? Uh, yields are coming up. Yields are coming up. We'll see, folks. They might get back to that 5%, though. Now, with that in mind, though, okay, so you have action in the 10-year. You jump over to the dollar index as we look at it. We've just dropped from 107 to 103. Okay, pay attention to that one, man. And what is that doing to commodities? Folks, if you haven't tried out the gold report yet, check it out. Gold surging $27. We're back above 2000 bucks. You can't go wrong, folks. Head on over to the front page of TFNN. Try out my dad's gold report. You get it for 30 days with a money-back guarantee. If you don't like it, you cancel. You get a money-back guarantee. You get a refund. You pay nothing over that time. For your car. That's Bobby, the number four car. That's Bobby, huh? He's got his cars. Uh, gold is rocking. Can't deny that. Great time to try out the gold report, folks, as we get the S&Ps off by about 15. We jump over to Disney shares. Disney, quite a run recently from 80 to 94. We're backing off a bit with the market today. Back to 94 bucks. Let's check in on some of the equities with their numbers. Best Buy, down about 4.2%. We talked about Abercrombie & Fitch, down about 6%. Coal shares, down 11%. Be careful of Coles. Yeah, be careful of Coles on that one. And what else we got here? Let's see. Whoops. Yeah, Lowe's with their numbers off about 3%. You spike down to 191, we're back to 198. S&P's off by 16. NASDAQ 100 now off triple digits. Let's jump around to some of those other magnificent seven. Tesla shares catches a bit today, up by 1.6%. We jump over to Meta shares, down half a percent right now. Yeah, Amazon off 2.2%. I don't know, what happened at the beginning of the Black Friday week? Not sure. Um, Microsoft giving back some of those gains of yesterday. Google shares in the positive by two-tenths percent right now. All right, let's see what else I had pulled up here. I got a couple articles. I just got to find them. I'll hold McQueen for you. Thank you. Okay, October home sales likely fell to new 13-year low. Pretty interesting, right? Now, how does this market behave once interest rates drop, when interest rates drop, if interest rates drop? Where'd he go? Is he right here? Did he fall? On the ground. Is he on the ground? Did we drop him, folks? No, oh, I think he's right in your chair somewhere, Tommy. Let me see. Now he dropped. There he is. I got him. There's McQueen. Let's put your blanket down here for a second. Did you show everybody no, your spot? You it. want it. Got to have the blankie, folks. We all got the blankie, right? Uh, high prices and elevated mortgage rates have made home purchases less affordable. He's coming right back. They're there, they're racing. You know, there is gonna be part of this with the fact that what is gonna happen when you have a supply release in the market when you have interest rates come down? Many people not willing to put their houses up on the supply right now, right? That's causing low numbers, yet high prices. And uh, yeah, that's gonna be a perplexing one to say the least. Now, this one is interesting, okay? We're going to talk about this one. We'll see if we make it through this segment. If not, we're going to finish it up on the back side of it. If you're in cash... Wait, Thank you. That's my McQueen. Thank you. Sure, I love racing. You risk missing out, bond managers of $2.5 say. 
And what this showing is, and of course, there's always an opportunity cost, folks, when you have a risk-free rate of return. Okay, now these are talking about bonds, no matter where you are, though. Cash is risk-free rate of return right now. I love racing, Tommy. Go. We're gonna finish this one up when we come back, folks. Stay tuned. We're gonna talk some uh, some bonds, some risk-free rate of returns, some cash, and some opportunity costs. One more segment. Don't go away. Tell them we'll be right back. Thank you. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Look at the markets again, pretty much right where we kicked off the trading session. S&P is off by 13. Daddy, NASDAQ 100 daddy, off by 79. Daddy, daddy, Are you daddy, racing? Daddy. Tommy, look at what we got. Thanks to our man Duncan Steve in the den. Folks, if you haven't tried out the Tiger's Den yet, please come in, sign up. It's a dollar for the year. That's just a way to validate who you are so we keep out the spammers. Tommy, Tommy, you want to see? Where were we? So he sends me a picture of the good old South Boston Yacht Club. And yeah, that is exactly where we were on the top of that balcony. Check it out, man. Um, so we have the top floor and everyone's out on the balcony enjoying it. Now, if you've never been to South Boston, folks, what's absolutely incredible is that it's basically right under the flight path for Logan Airport. So you got planes coming over you every three minutes. Sometimes there's two at a time coming over you. We're sitting on the balcony, little cool, little crisp. Uh, that was Saturday. A little bit cool, a little bit crisp, but absolutely amazing time. And, you know, 
being by the water, checking it out, being home, and thanks for sending that over, Steve. Yeah, that's it, man. Right on the top, couple doors, ways it works your way out. And uh, Santa Claus even played a trip to the O'Brien reunion in Southie for the children. You gotta love it. McQueen's fading and jumping back. So, talking about this bond deal real quick. Um, just pay attention to the amount of money you have in money markets, man. Right? You got yields coming back. They're talking about opportunity costs here. You know, be careful in fixed income. Because on a longer duration, okay, the, the, the percentages are at still on a longer duration. When you go back on a historical basis, okay, they are not at extremes. They're at extremes since 2002, right, since 2008. They are not at extremes on a historical basis, but boy. And this references the amount of money that is available for money markets. And this article goes back to last week, but $5.73 trillion. There's the climb. Uh, absolutely remarkable how many people pulled out of the stock market during COVID, right? Look at that climb. You had, what, a solid trillion-plus dollars that got put into money market funds as the economy plummeted. Nonetheless, you're talking about $5.7 trillion in money markets. All right, Tommy. Folks, thanks so much for tuning in. Stay tuned. Basil's up next. Live programming all day. My dad's back from 3 till 4. And what are we going to say, folks? Say bye, everybody. See you next time. See you next time. Hey, look at the camera. Bye, folks. See you next time. Bye, folks. See you next time. Love you, buddy. Bye, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day, folks. We'll see you tomorrow.